Hello, Emma. Can you explain the basic structure and location of the liver? Of course. The liver is an unpaired organ that weighs about 1.5 kilograms. It's situated in the right side of the abdominal cavity, just beneath the diaphragm. The liver is connected to the biliary system, which is essential for the digestion and processing of fats. Interestingly, the left lobe of the liver extends to the left of the midline. In some cases, this extension is quite significant, reaching behind the spleen and around the stomach. What are the firmly fused parts of the liver? The liver has a few areas that are firmly fused. One such part is the area that closely adheres to the diaphragm, known as the bare area or area nuda. This section is not covered by the peritoneal surface, hence it is referred to as bare. Additionally, the inferior vena cava passes through the liver, creating an indentation as it presses into the liver tissue. Could you describe the peritoneal spaces around the liver? Certainly. The liver is surrounded by several peritoneal spaces. These include the space around the liver, the subhepatic space, and the diaphragmatic space. There are also specific areas where free abdominal cavity fluid might accumulate, such as the hepatorenal recess, located between the kidney and liver and the subdiaphragmatic recess. What about the ligaments associated with the liver? The liver is supported and connected by several important ligaments. The ligamentum teres hepatis is the obliterated umbilical vein, found caudally. The ligamentum venosum is another obliterated structure, part of the embryonic venous duct connecting the portal vein and the inferior vena cava, positioned cranially on the dorsal side. On the anterior side of the liver, we have the ligamentum falciform, a remnant of the ventral mesentery. The coronary ligaments, both anterior and posterior, form a crown-like structure around the bare area, suspending the liver from the diaphragm. On the sides, the triangular ligaments converge with the coronary ligaments, creating a duplicature. Lastly, there's the fibrous appendix, an appendage at the end of the liver on the left. How does the liver maintain its smooth surface? The liver is covered by the peritoneum, which provides a smooth surface. This smooth covering is essential for the liver's movement and interaction with adjacent organs. What can you tell me about the posterior part of the liver? The posterior part of the liver bears impressions of various organs, including the stomach, kidneys, and duodenum. Because the liver is quite elastic, it retains these impressions, which helps in identifying its orientation and the lobes. How are the lobes of the liver distinguished? The lobes of the liver are distinguished based on certain anatomical features, particularly the sagittal fissures. The right sagittal fissure is a deep groove that houses two critical structures, the groove for the inferior vena cava, known as the sulcus veni cavi inferioris, and the fossa vesicae felii, where the gallbladder resides. These features play a vital role in the vascular connection and outflow of the liver. In the left sagittal fissure? The left sagittal fissure contains the ligamentum venosum orantii, also known as the ductus venosus, and the ligamentum teres hepatis. In cases where there's increased pressure in the portal circulation, this part can recanalize back into the umbilical vein, forming venous structures that allow blood to flow out of the liver through the umbilical vein. Finally, what is the porta hepatis? The porta hepatis is the gateway to the liver, located between the right and left sagittal fissures. This crucial structure contains the portal triad, the hepatic duct, the proper hepatic artery, and the portal vein. The porta hepatis leads into the hepatoduodenal ligament, which continues to the duodenum, facilitating the liver's connection to the rest of the digestive system. Can you explain how the liver lobes are structured and separated? Certainly. The liver is divided into several lobes that are not equal in size, but are functionally separated. Each lobe has its own distinct vascular supply and bile duct system. The left lobe, or lobus sinister, is clearly visible from both the front and back. The right lobe, or lobus dexter, is separated from the left lobe by Cantley's line. This line runs from the axis of the gallbladder fossa across the convexity of the liver to the fossa of the inferior vena cava. Additionally, the internal boundary between these lobes is formed by the middle hepatic vein. What are the quadrate and caudate lobes? The quadrate lobe, or lobus quadratus, is located under the transverse part formed by the portal vein. 
The caudate lobe, or lobus caudatus, is an elongated lobe that is visible only from the back. In cases of cirrhosis or other liver diseases, the caudate lobe tends to enlarge because it has a direct connection to the veins leading into the inferior vena cava. It often overlaps the inferior vena cava from the back. How are the liver segments defined, and why are they important? The liver is divided into functional anatomical units known as segments. These segments can be surgically removed under certain conditions, making them crucial for liver surgeries. The division is based on vascular supply. The horizontal plane of the portal vein divides the liver horizontally into upper and lower segments, while three vertical planes formed around the course of the hepatic veins, right, middle, and left, further subdivide it. Can you describe the different segments within each lobe? Certainly. The caudate lobe is located at the top and back of the liver. The left lobe, or lobus sinister, includes the superior lateral left segment, sinister lateralis superior, and the inferior medial left segment, sinister medialis inferior, divided by the left hepatic vein. The quadrate lobe includes the superior medial, medial superior, and inferior medial, medial inferior, segments. The right lobe, or lobus dexter, has several segments, anterior medial, posterior inferior, posterior lateral, and posterior medial, divided by the right hepatic vein into medial and lateral sectors. Why is it important to differentiate these segments? Differentiating these segments is crucial for surgical procedures. Surgeons can remove segments as functional units during operations. For example, they might perform a left-sided hepatectomy to remove a specific segment or an extended left-sided hepatectomy for a larger portion. Similarly, right-sided hepatectomies and extended right-sided hepatectomies are performed based on the extent of the disease. This method is particularly useful for removing affected areas such as metastases, allowing for precise and targeted surgeries.